In this short video, I'd like to illustrate how one can engage the collision detection inside of an inventor assembly to actually have components contact each other and thereby drive different types of motion, test mechanisms out, make sure you're going to get the results that you want, all in the name of digital prototyping, trying to make a CAD model represent what might really happen in the real world. So, uh, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch to my Geneva gear. And I just think these Geneva gears are amazing. So it's uh, quite an impressive device. And then I'm just going to open it up. And then there's this Geneva gear assembly. <clears throat> so within the Geneva gear assembly, there's a couple of things going on. Uh, we could drive the motion as well just to see how the mechanism interacts. But we're going to talk a little bit about how the inventor system uses clash detection. So I'm going to go ahead and underneath the bottom component, this is the wheel, there's a drive this constraint. I want you to right click on that and go ahead and suppress that. So now that we've suppressed this constraint, we should be able to take our wheel and just kind of move it around. And this is the classic behavior, right? I can just stick that pin right in the middle of one of these gears. And so that's not quite what we want. So there's kind of a two-step process to be able to get this to work. The first step is we have to pick the components that are going to interact. So in this case, we've got a gear wheel. And then we've got a little sleeve that goes around the pin. So I'm going to select both of those using control clicking and left clicking. Then I'm going to right click out in space and I'm going to add them to what's called a contact set. So this is a way inside of Inventor to indicate that two components can interact with geometry. So you could make as many as you want, but I typically recommend that we only turn on the ones that we want to interact because otherwise we'll be asking Inventor to do lots and lots of math that may not be that helpful. So again, try to pick just the components that are going to interact in this case the sleeve and the gear and that's the first step and you'll notice here at the left hand side of the browser it says contact set you'll get a little almost looks like a magnet bar there with some red waves and that just lets us know that these can touch so the other half of the equation is in the inspect tab inside of the assembly you actually have to turn on that contact so I'm just going to left click on mine because it's already on and that's what it would look like if it was off and so if it's off, even though these two parts are set to interact with each other, they will not. And again, you can grab just the top of this pin, left click, hold and drag, and that's how you can engage it. But once I click on the activate contact solver, make sure it's active. You should see it stays blue even after your cursor moves away from it. Now I can left click drag and we can see that the gear indexes now so again just a fascinating device I would have loved to have been the one who invented that um, and that's how you can interact with the contact solver and actually have mechanisms drive motion just as a corollary I'm going to right click back on this constraint that I suppressed earlier I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to unsuppress it so now that forces it back to 90 degrees and then I'm going to right click on that constraint again and I'm going to choose the drive option. So this one has been set up to uh, control an angular constraint so I just want to see this mechanism work so I'm going to set this to 1080 and then if I click the double arrow I could drive adaptivity, do collision detection I'll go with one degree, you could up that to five degrees or two degrees but I'm just going to go ahead and, and play it the way it is. And we'll see that at one degree works very well. Sometimes I get this. Occasionally if I've been driving it myself, it may actually feel that it's going to hit. Just go ahead and hit OK. And then you can hit play again and it usually resolves itself. And then you can see as it cycles through we can continue to see how that indexes. So that's it, just a short simple video showing you how you can set up that contact solver 
and how you can drive a constraint to test the motion of your mechanism. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching and have a blessed day.